Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Monday morning, the 15th of February, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me today. We continue our exploration into the parables of Jesus Christ, and over the next number of weeks, we're going to be looking at a parable every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I'm glad you could join me today. So of the 24 parables that Jesus told in the New Testament, we're going to be discussing the parable of the lamp on the stand today. And um, Jesus had just finished telling the people the parable of the sower. And we read the next uh, story that he told in Mark chapter 4, 21 to 23. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears, let him hear. So when we look at this um, short parable, to correctly understand what Jesus Christ is saying here, we have to look at what the Bible says about light and lamps in the Gospels. And um, we see... In John chapter 8, uh, Jesus told his disciples something about light and himself being the light. He said this, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16, Jesus also said this. He said to his disciples, You are the light of the world. So, In John 8, he said that he is the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, he says to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So, so when we think about what Jesus said in John 8, 12 and Matthew 5, 14 to 16, um, there's a lot that Christ says about light inside of himself and inside of his followers. So these two scriptures, I think, help us to understand what Jesus is saying in Mark chapter 4. Um, what he is saying is that he, in fact, is the light of the world. And the light inside of Jesus Christ um, is the character of Christ, which is truth. Now, in another scripture, we're told that Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by him. So, if the light of the character of Christ, the person of Christ, if the character of Christ is truth, and truth is like a lamp. If we follow him, we will not walk in darkness or deception, which is the opposite of truth, but we will have the light of life, which will illuminate our path. And further to this, um, the world walks in darkness because it does not walk in the light of truth. But it's interesting to think about this. Um, The thing about the truth of Jesus is that If we as his disciples, if we accept his truth and we internalize it, um, the truth comes from him. And the truth that's internalized is like light that shines forth from our lives, uh, just like a lamp shines forth light. So the light of God's truth shines out of us, just like it shines out of him. The word Christian actually means Christ-like one, imitators of Christ as his dearly beloved children. In Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Jesus says that his disciples are the light of the world and that what he is saying is that the light of truth shines in the darkness of this world, bringing light to humanity. So taking these two principles and applying them to the parable of the light on the stand in Mark, 
What I think Jesus is trying to say is that when we come to know him, we become his disciples and we internalize truth as his disciples. That truth shines through us, just like a lamp. And a lamp, if you think about it, is meant to be on a lampstand. Um, it's not meant to be hidden under a bowl or hidden under a bed. When you light a lamp and you bring it into a room, it's meant to be on display, on full display, so that it brings to light the, the four corners of wherever it is situated. So that's its purpose. In the same way, we have been placed in this world, in the world in which we live, as lamps of Christ's truth. And the lamp of Christ's truth is shining in us and out of us and through us. We weren't meant to be hidden. We weren't meant to hide away, you know, to be on some commune or, or to be in a monastery somewhere. We were meant to be out on display in the world in which we've been placed so that our, our, the light of God's truth shines through us into the dark corners of where we're situated. God's designed us, designed us to be light bearers and purpose that is light would shine through us to bring uh, illumination to the lies and deceptions that are hidden in the darkness of this world and, and to expose them for what they are, to expose lies for what they are. So God's truth in us, where he places us, exposes lies and brings out what was purposed to be brought open so that it can be seen for what it is. Now, there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed by the light of God's truth. We must not hide this light. Hiding the truth is contrary to our purpose and calling. If we have the truth of God, we have a solemn responsibility to spread the truth wherever God gives us the opportunity. It's um, just as someone who is the cure for a, a life-threatening disease, uh, they have the moral responsibility to spread that cure around. Now, God didn't light our lamp so that we would remain hidden. He wants us to be children of the light, to be bearers of his truth, letting our light shine before others that they may see our good deeds and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Now, not everyone is going to respond positively to the truth. As a matter of fact, many are going to hate us for it. Many are going to despise us for it. Some will run away and hide from it. In John 3.20, Jesus said that everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. So don't be surprised that when you bear the truth of God in your in the corner of your world that there's going to be people that shrink back from you that don't want to come near you because they're afraid inwardly that the light within you will expose them for being who they are and they know that they have evil and some people are in love with their evil deeds but there are those that will be drawn to the light and will come to know the truth and that truth will set them free. You see, God's patience with this world and delaying his coming is because he, he loves people and he wants people to come to know him. And um, until the full measure of people that he has purposed come to know him, he's going to continue uh, share, uh, spreading the gospel message through the world. And we are his ambassadors. We are the ones that take this message of truth into the darkness of this world and expose the lies for what they are. God has placed in us the same message that the Apostle Paul gave in 2 Corinthians chapter 5.20 in which he said, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we are God's ambassadors for reconciliation. We are the light 
of the world. We are bearers of God's truth. We testify to the truth, which is, which is the source of eternal life, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ and the message of his gospel. And um, our job on this earth is to be a light bearer, to implore others on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. This is Food for Thought.